Okay, so we're going to look a little bit further into the topic of optimization, but this time at a uh, different type of problem. The, the information provided will make it feel different, but ultimately we're still after trying to find where a high point or a low point is, but it's going to be disguised and have other conditions that didn't previously exist. So let me just sort of uh, unveil a concept. So this type of optimization is going to deal with problems that have conditions or constraints on them. A condition or a constraint. So this sounds like you're straight in a math class right now. Um, let me give you a way to look at this. So we're, we're trying to optimize our savings, for example. Our constraint, and maybe more than one constraint, is our paycheck and expenses, bills that we have to pay, things that we, we have to put money out for. So how do we put the most into our savings given all this information? That would be a type of way to look at an optimization problem that's more involved than just where's the high point. And there could be more than one answer. Um, let's suppose you're trying to minimize uh, expenses in a business. What are the constraints? Well, you still have to produce a product. You know, and there's conditions that come along with producing the product. Um, there are actually quite a number of ways to study the general topic of optimization. Um, in my own education, man, this topic came up in multiple different disciplines and calculus was often involved, but not only involved. Um, and certainly there were other ways of looking at certain problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a particular theorem that deals with optimization. And once again, it'll sort of steer away from the, it's interesting, and uh, go back to sort of looking like a math problem. Um, it's called Lagrange's theorem is, is the formula. And uh, sometimes this is the, the method for solving this is using Lagrange multipliers. Um, I'll let you do some look up on the uh, history of the mathematician Lagrange. But let's just start with um, what's the theorem say and, and, and then uh, in another set of videos we'll, we'll look at applying it. So let F and G have continuous partial derivatives. All right, stop right there. Two, or maybe exclamation point two. There's two functions and they both have multiple variables because there's partial derivatives. Continuous partial derivatives means the um, that the derivative doesn't have any holes in it. It could have a sharp turn, but not a hole. All right, so we've got two functions with the ability to do partial derivatives. All right, so f has an extremum at a point, and so that's either going to be for what we're going to study right now a maximum or a minimum. Okay, a maximum high point or a minimum low point. Ah, the other function is called the constraint, which I'm going to challenge you all to call a condition. It's a, it's a condition that has to be met. For I cannot win the lottery if I haven't purchased lottery tickets. Condition. I cannot save money if I'm not earning any money. Condition. So the function is the function I'm trying to find the max or min. 
So this is where F is involved. But this function G is the condition. And this C here is just a constant. It's a constant. OK. You don't need to have a picture of where this is going yet. I just want to make sure that you could have it written down so you can go um, decipher the details later. OK. Lagrange's name is going to go away. All right, so if the gradient of the constraint is not the zero vector, so a smooth curve means you can't have the zero vector for the two, the two derivatives at the same time. Then there's a real number. Ooh, what is that? What is this guy? Well, that is the Greek letter lambda. It's lowercase lambda. Such that the function we're trying to find the max or min, it's, what is this called again? Oh, yeah, that's called the gradient. The gradient of this function is equal to the gradient of that function times a multiplier. Now this is a scalar, right? That's a scalar. So when you multiply a vector by a scalar, it just means you're doubling the length. You know, it it basically means you're gonna get this max or min when the gradients, which is two different vectors, are parallel, but maybe not the same length. So that's what the theorem says. It turns out that this part here is virtually our formula and we get to solve this equation. When we get to the examples, it turns out that the equation might actually be the challenge. We shall see. We shall see. Stick around. Come back to the next one. We will work through our first example.